Wait a second. Uh oh. Oh crap, 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 okay. Uh, uh, shoot, do I talk about all three seasons? Uh, the manga's done, do I spoil the ending? Oh, the controversy, how- can't forget about the controversy. Oh. Hi. Today we're talking about Kaguya. I mentioned in my last video that sometimes all you need to get you to start watching a show is just a clip or a moment, something to actually get you to sit down and watch the show. Kaguya was no different for me. It was just so silly and so out there, I couldn't help but just be interested in what is going on in this show. Well, anyway, once I had watched enough clips to fill a magazine, I thought to myself, maybe I'll check it out sometime. And then I went back to watching the best show ever made. Season 2 starts January 7th. I'm so excited. Please, can you help me? I eventually did sit down and watch it, and I have to say, I'm quite pleased. So without further ado, let's sit down and talk about Kaguya-sama, Love is War. Love is War, Ultra Romantic. A genius battle of hearts and mind. Featuring Dante. After a short introduction where we learn that love is, and I quote, WAR! We meet our first two combatants. The Student Council's President, Miyuki Shirogane, Kaguya Shinomiya, VP of the Academy Student Council. And we hear a, a scandalous little rumor that, oh, wouldn't they be the perfect couple? They must be dating already. Why, it'd be the talk of the town. And then it all begins. Ding Dong A goes, hmm, that's a, that's a funny idea. You know, maybe if he got down on one knee, gave me a country, and decided to sell his soul to me, I'd consider it. And Person B goes, I don't know, she got hot though. And nothing happens. I kid you not. The first episode is them trying to figure out who's going to ask the other to go to the movies. Welcome to season one, boys. Don't get me wrong, season one is still plenty fun, it's just we spend a lot of time focusing on the mind games between Shirogane and Kaguya. A comparison is Death Note. I have thoughts about that. We're playing 5D chess with multiversal time travel and portals and mind games and layers within layers within layers within faints within faints within faints. Can you tell I read the Dome series? In Kaguya, it's two teenagers who can't get over how much they like each other significantly lower stakes. That honest the repetition of, oh no, but then he might not lack him. It's tedious. The thing that best sums this up for me is the umbrella scene. Quick summary, it's raining, they pretend they forgot their umbrellas so they can have the other person ask them to share the umbrella. Because of course, you know, this is, and they, oh, whatever. Anyway, super simple interaction. Person A goes, oh, it's raining. Would you like an umbrella? Then person B goes, Why, thank you. That's very kind of you. And then it's done. It's not that simple. Because here, it feels like the whole planet is going to implode if they just so happen to do something nice for each other. Fortunately, they made the show just for me and knew I would be complaining about the opening, as I do with most things I like. So, as the season goes on, it shifts away from the mind games and more towards the characters themselves, which is fantastic because I like caring about my characters, because I'm a weeb. Let's turn tragedy into comedy real quick with the introduction of our third council member, Fujiwara. She's... cool, I guess? Okay, she's the dumb one, okay? I don't want to be mean. She has her moments, don't get me wrong. She helps uh, Shirogane not suck at everything he does. She foils Kaguya's plans, which is really funny. She beats up Ishigami, which I'll talk about him in a second, but that's also really funny. But she never gets, like, her own time to shine. Like, she's never like, we are talking about Chika Fujiwara right now, and she is awesome. Okay, except maybe at the end of episode three, which, to be honest, is how you probably know about her and the show. The dance looks really cool. And... What was that talking about? Yes, Kaguya. Yes, she does some teaching of her own. She helps the fourth member of the student council, Ishigami, with his testing. He's not important right now. I'll talk about him eventually. He's not that important. Anyway, despite her unorthodox methods, we learn that she's genuinely a nice person. She cares about her peers, and she's just... stunted? 
I mean, being the daughter of the most powerful family in all of Japan will do that to you. In fact, this all culminates in my favorite scene of the season, and I'm gonna skip right to it. The last episode is nice for me on just many different levels. We get to see more into the world that Kaguya lives in, just how being the daughter of the most powerful family in Japan sucks. Balls. Being the daughter of the most powerful family in Japan, she is basically at the beck and call of her family. So if Papa says, hey there kid, you had a weekend? Not anymore. You're coming to somewhere else, away from your friends, and away from your firework festival that you were planning on doing and being involved with, gone with the wind. Being the most powerful family in Japan must just, it just must suck, to be honest. And Shirogane, he gets his head out of his butt long enough to do something nice for Kaguya. And, believe it or not, I really like the moment where he starts doubting himself afterward. Because that feels more, it, it feels more genuine. You cannot tell me. You have not gone out, done something, and come back and been like, that was the most cringy thing I've ever done in my life. I'm never going to sleep again. I, I wish to just scratch my face off. Be because it leads to a very nice moment. Maybe she didn't think I was cringy at all. Maybe she thought I was cool. Oh, he finally gets it. I felt so relieved. There is hope for these two, at least. Now as good a time as any to mention the dub. It's great. I mentioned before, that's what got me into the show. Uh, Ian Sinclair, I want to mention him specifically as the narrator. He is the reason I started watching this show, because... Pickled plums. She's never seen such delights. Oh, packet seasoned rice. Uh, magnifique. This is already a silly show, given the premise, the setting, the antics of the characters, so having the English voice actors just ham it up to high heaven cranks it all up to 11. And the best part? It gets better every season. Which, speaking of which... In short, season two is where things really start getting good. The story has its feet under its legs at this point. We are actually moving toward a story now, and it's less one-off events that kind of lightly lead into each other. It's less one episode is about an umbrella, the next episode is about what are we going to do for a summer vacation. This is leading into the next three episodes, next two episodes, next three episodes, and then it comes together at the end, which I will talk about shortly. We'll just check in on the main characters real quick. They're still being weird, we'll check back with them later. I briefly mentioned in my last video that I like it when stories take the time to flesh out their side characters, and fortunately, Kaguya is one of those shows. We quickly get introduced to the fiery, definitely not a tsundere, why would I ever have feelings for you idiot, Miko Inu. Yes. It's Inu, like the dog, she, no, it's not like the dog, it's, and I'm gonna be honest, she initially comes off as just the biggest stick in the mud, holier than thou, jerk face. I did not like her. And then we get her tragic backstory. The world is full of bad people, and the more there are, the less I see my parents, because they have to deal with them. Well, shucks. That makes it hard for me to dislike her. And she wanted to shave all the boys' heads. I couldn't vote for that. And speaking of tragic backstory, you Ishigami. Remember how I didn't talk about him earlier? I lied, he's actually my favorite character, and here is why. And hey, just a heads up, I am going to fully spoil Season 2, Episode 11. I highly recommend you watch it yourself, but here is the summary. Ishigami as a character was always weird to me. He always he came off as, I hate to say it, but... Someone who has read it gold. It's hard to like someone like this. Again, he has his moments coming in and just being brutally honest to Fujiwara. Fujiwara! Eater! You dirty, sneaky, crooked, conniving con artist! Have you no shame? It's great, but it's like, you feel bad liking him? But in season two, he does try to improve himself. He joins the cheer squad to get himself out of his element to try to interact with normal people. He also gets Kaguya to help him with his studies. Season two is him trying to become a better person. This all culminates in the school festival. That's what they're doing. They're having like a club track meet. 
So him and the cheerleading squad, they all come together. They're all like, yeah, we got this, we got this, we got this. And he's like starting to feel good about himself. He's like, yeah, I'm with my people. I'm doing my thing. And then we see her. And we go into a flashback. And we learn why he's like this. And it's truly awful. Unsurprisingly, Ishigami was a loner in middle school. And this girl was one of the few people who were nice to him. And because of this kindness, he respected her. So when he finds out she has a boyfriend, he's happy for her. Unfortunately, he finds out her boyfriend is cheating on her. And since Ishigami wants her to be happy as well, he confronts the boyfriend. He tells him to stop or he'll tell everyone. The boyfriend instead offers Ishigami pictures of his girlfriend, if you catch my drift. Enraged, Ishigami attacks him. Of course, it being middle school, a fight breaking out, people rush in, and what do they see? They see the loner kid attacking the president of the theater club. So when the theater club president goes, my guy, I know you're in love with her, but that doesn't mean you should be stalking her. And just because I told you to stop, you attack me? Buddy, that's not nice. Of course everyone believes the theater president. Theater kids are awful. The despair is palpable. As his whole life crumbles around him, his low reputation plummeting even further. And after we, re we learn that this has happened, Ishigami is not in a good spot. He is about to give up. He is about to fail again. So he closes his eyes to the world. It was the day he came over. Ishigami remembers the student council coming to his aid, accepting his innocence and offering a place amongst them. He realizes that he has to push forward and that he can't let the past hold him back anymore. That no matter what, he isn't just some loser and with a resounding Go to hell, dumbass. <laughs> he sets off to prove himself. And yet, he fails. But this time it's different. The cheer squad come to him, and instead of berating and belittling him like he expects. They cheer him up, they commiserate with him, they tell him better luck next time. So he opens his eyes, and when he looks up at them, they all have faces. If you don't already know, in anime and manga, when you're drawing a background character or a very minor character, they often don't have their faces drawn. Why design a character that shows up briefly, if once, if never to be seen again? But this time, when he looks up and he sees them, they have faces because they're important to him. I'm crying, you're crying, we're all crying. This was supposed to be a rom-com review. I don't know about y'all, but I give you a break. You want a break? Let's, uh, let's go check in on Kaguya and Shirogane. Yep, they're still being weird. All right, next season. What can I say? Season 3 is the culmination of everything good of the last two seasons. It's got the funny dub moments, it's got the heartwarming character moments. Oh, Shirogane's voice actor, he briefly changes for this season. Um, I didn't notice at first, so he's doing a great job. Uh, I will put his name. The tension between Miko and Ishigami, you could drown in it, and I they need to kiss like yesterday. I know they're like high schoolers, but shut up. Um, there's another new side character, uh, Maki Shija. She's great. I love her. She's so funny because she's so re hashtag relatable who I'm literally watching what she's going through right now at work and I hate it. Did you notice her in season one? I noticed her in season one, but I... Yeah, it's not important. Most importantly, and I cannot stress this enough, the two ding-dongs get over themselves for long enough to do something nice for each other.
comes the part where you go on and on about how you actually don't like the president and come up with some over-the-top excuse as I do. Huh? I like him. I like Miyuki Shirokune a lot. When I saw this scene, I practically did a backflip out of my chair. It was so relieving to finally be like, going, you know? It's happening. Let's do this. Guys, we just spent the last 15 minutes talking about a rom-com. Of course, my favorite moment is the confession scene. It's the perfect mix of these characters' silly, over-the-top brain games, and this slow burn of romance that has been building for the last three seasons finally erupts into a fiery inferno of love and passion. I may have shed a tear when I saw that blue balloon come in and absolutely ruin everything! Akasaka, what are you doing?! Oh, the controversy! How could I forget about the controversy? Okay, you're gonna love this. When season 3 was airing, it was doing so well ratings-wise that it overtook Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood on my anime list. Do you know how beloved Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is? It's like... You don't do that, okay? What are you thinking? The hubris. The pride. The fall of Icarus. Other words. There's a lot more I would love to talk about, but as I've mentioned previously, the caffeine is wearing off and I'm starting to wilt like a flower that has not been watered in days. So I'm going to shut it down here, if you don't mind. In short, you really should watch this show because it's a great time all around. It's got fun characters, it's got funny moments, and it has a lot of heart to it. This is where I cut in and say I have now since read the manga, and it's great. Uh, seasons 1 through 3 do a great job of covering what you need, so at the very least watch it. If you like it, read on. I highly recommend it. The later arcs toward the end, they get weird and wild, but we love weird and wild here, so I highly recommend it. And with that, I'm done. Hey there, I just want to say thank you very much for watching my video. I know I'm not the best at articulating myself or doing things correctly, but thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I really would like to do this more regularly. If you have a suggestion, leave it in the comment. I really enjoyed having comments to read on my Nagatoro video. And always, watch some more. Watch my videos. I have two right here. My face should be covered by the subscribe button. Videos will be here. This one will be the one YouTube thinks you should watch. This is the one I think you should watch, okay? It's probably gonna be the Nakatorio video because it's so good. You should watch that one. It's actually, it's actually a good video. Anyway, hit subscribe, hit the like button, other things that YouTubers have to say. Bye-bye. Dio is the voice actor for Shirogane's dad in the sub. There's nothing to that. I just thought it was really funny that Dio was playing someone's dad. Yeah, Kaguya-chan. <laughs>